Welcome back YouTube. My name is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, we are going to have a look at the different number variable types that there are. So there are many data types that we can use. And the ones that are important when working with numbers are integer, float and double. So let's create three variables. For example, our public int health. So that could be the health of our player. So let's say we have a hit points or health points of 100 as the start value. So we can create a variable called health, which has the number or which carries the number 100. You can consider those as a little piece of data that is stored while our game is alive, or at least while this script is alive. And we can change that value dynamically within our game. Here we have created our first variable, which is called health. So you give it a name. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And it's generally constructed this way. You have the access modifier public, for example, as you could see here, we used public here already for the class. This allows us to access the number from Unity and also from other scripts, which will make more sense later on. For now, just take that into consideration. Then you have integer. As you can see, it's a struct in 32, which represents a 32 bit signed integer, which means that this value health can have values of two exponent 32, which goes from roughly 750 or 760 or minus 760 trillion to plus 760 trillion. So roughly this is the amount of values that this health can have. And that's a 32 bit. 32 bit whole number, whole number. All right, so that's the integer. And then let's go back to how it's structured. So we have the access modifier. We say that it's a, an integer. So that's the data type of the variable. We give it a name and then we give it a value. So here we initialize it directly with a value of 100. So we say health has 100 as its value. You could create a variable without value as well. So you could say public int damage. You could say damage has no value at the start. So we have not initialized it here. So it's just a damage variable, which we then can use within our code later on. All right. So next one is, for example, float hunger. So let's say we write a survival game and we want to have a hunger variable as well. The player could have a hunger value of let's say 100 or it could have a hunger value of 55.3 or stuff like that so we can use that with a float so we can assign a float value float point value here so let's say for example 3.5 if we do that however we need to add the f at the end it could be an uncapped f or it could be a capped f what that does is it tells the variable I am a float point number, which is of type float. Because if I don't do that, for example, with a double, and this one could be my strength. So let's say the strength is 10.5. There I don't need it. There I don't need to tell it it's a double because in C sharp, Values which don't have an F at the end and have a decimal point, they are doubles and values that have an F at the end. So after the number are floating point numbers. What is the difference between a float and a double? Well, let's have a quick look. Let's hover over float and we see it represents a single precision floating point number. Unfortunately, that's not very precise, but what it means is a float is a 32 bit decimal value. And a double, however, is a 64 bit decimal value. What that means is that a float is in general a little bit smaller. It has a lower range, which simply means that the double is more precise than a float. They are equally fast, so it doesn't really matter which one you use in terms of speed and performance but very often floats are used for internally from Unity. For example, for physics, float is used. 
whenever you work with speeds or with gravity or things like that, then you should use floats. All right. So let's use those variables real quick. Let's debug those. We've seen we can use print here to simply print something onto our console, but we can also use the debug class, which contains method to ease debugging while developing a game. So we can use debug.log, which allows us to log the message to the Unity console. So in those terms, it's pretty much the same thing. So in our case, the debug log and the print statement are the same thing because we are within a mono behavior class. So a class that inherits from mono behavior. If it didn't, then we would have to use always debug log because the print statement would not be available. All right. So with our, within our debug log, what we can do is we can print or we can say health. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Plus, so health colon empty space plus our health, for example. What that will allow us is to print our health onto our console. So let's get rid of this update method, or at least of this call with, of the update method. And let's have a look what happens in Unity. So I'm going to start it. And I can see health, it says, is 100. All right, that's great. So let's have a look again. Let's go to our cube. As you can see, the values that we have created, so the variables, health, damage, hunger, and strength, are all here on the right-hand side. And you can even see damage has been set to zero because we have not set any value for damage. If we do that, it automatically enters zero for an integer, 0, 0.0 for a float and a double. So if we, for example, change it here in Unity, so let's say we have 200 health now, and we start the game, what will happen is the 200 health will be recognized. So whatever we change within Unity, within our inspector, will be transferred to the game itself. So the values that we have assigned in our script here will be overridden. All right, so we could do the same thing. For example, we could debug.log something in our update method. For example, the hunger colon plus hunger could be done here. So let's have a look at that. Let's run the code. And now hunger will be printed many times here. As you can see, it's printed very often. If we now change hunger to, let's say 5.5, now you can see hunger was five for a, for just a split second, and that was already recognized. So as you can see, we can edit our variables in Unity within the inspector. So now I change it to 25, and even that little split second that it was just the two and not the 25 was recognized here, and it was for four frames in total that two was the the only number within our hunger value here. Alrighty, so this is how we can use variables and we will use them in multiple different ways and you will see how we can use them within the next videos. So just for you, quick recap. If you want to create a variable, there is the structure that you have to follow. You can add an access modifier. Then you have to add the type of the variable. You give it a name and then you can either assign a value to it like this or you can leave it open. But what is important, you always end the statement with a semicolon. So that's always something that you have to keep in mind. And the ones that are important for us are integers for whole numbers, floats for decimal values, and, and doubles for decimal values. In most cases, however, we are going to use float. All right, so see you in the next video where we are going to cover different data types. So we're going to have a look at string, char, and bool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it, then of course, check out the link in the description to my whole course. See you in the next video.